All right, guys, today we are actually going to be doing a full on breakdown of the Leatherman arc. And this is the, of course, Leatherman arc. We're gonna be going over it, talking about so far my experiences with it. And admittedly, I've got it or had it for probably about three days now. So I've not had it for an incredible amount of time, but we'll break down what I like about it and what I don't like about it so far. So of course, uh, I did a video, just a little almost pretty much teaser of this knife when it first came out and talked about the five things that I don't like about this knife and I would say that still most of that is true and for those who don't know the five things I dislike about it. First off, I feel like it was a little bit of an over promise with the 20 tools. Not a huge fan of the actual like, you know, they're calling like this little strike face area, you know, the little strike plate, calling that a tool. And so not a huge fan of that. I also really dislike the thumb stud uh, on this guy. So the thumb stud is something that I think adds an extra catching component when you're cutting through things. And then of course the blade length is one of the for a full-size Leatherman is I think one of the smallest blade lengths to date. Now it is more uh, sorry, it is magna cut, so it is, you know, a good performing steel, but at the same time too, smaller blade steel means less cutting area, so not the best. Anyways, outside of that, it's okay, not a huge fan of the clip placement itself. Um, I do prefer the original clip placement on uh, Leatherman Multi-Tools, but yeah, all stuff that's just kind of, you know, nitty gritty. Another thing that's kind of happening now, at least at the time of filming this video, video so a lot of people are having the um, wire cutters break and I think part of the reason why that is is hopefully it's very hard to show here but there's a little bit of gap um, at the very bottom of the like wire cutters hopefully you guys can see like my finger running past at the very bottom here of the wire cutters and so what's happening is you cut wire it kind of sneaks down behind the wire cutters and presses back up on the actual wire cutters themselves and causes them to shatter. So hopefully that is something that we will see resolved. Now I have not been going around cutting wire with this thing primarily because I just don't have a lot of wire to cut. So I haven't really been doing that. And to be honest, the wire cutters are not something that I typically use a lot on my multi-tools. So anyway, it's not a huge loss for me, but it is something that is disconcerting to say the least. Now, as far as my actual like time using it goes, once again, the pliers seem to be perfectly fine. I am not the largest fan of the new New Age plier head from uh, Leatherman. What I mean by that is you guys can see that these are almost more like a triangle, whereas the um, like older school Leathermans have a very narrow, very like slender plier head. And I really do not know why they've gone over ever since the free series to this kind of like triangular shape. You can see that there's a lot more meat down here at the base of the plier head. I really do like something like the charge where it's a very, you know, like slender and very, very rounded head. Like you guys can clearly see that the pliers on the um, charge over here are far more rounded and far more slender point. So I will say it's kind of a, you know, diminishing gains thing because the actual plier like thickness or width is about the same, but it just means that like when, if you are reaching down or up into some small crevice, there's less physical material here to get caught on. Whereas in contrast, there is more physical material on the new, um, arc slash free series. This is not entirely um, something relegated to the arc. Other things too that's worth noting, there is of course no ruler anymore. They got rid of the ruler. So unfortunately, I think, I really don't know like why they got rid of it. It wasn't something that I used every day, but it was something that I did like to have and I did occasionally use. So I think it's kind of unfortunate to get rid of it. We'll say though, the action is nice. It is very butterfly knife-esque as you guys can see there. And once again, this is like three days in. So this is out of box, incredibly smooth. And the other thing that I will say I do for the most part like is that because these multi-tools uh, now or things like the Leatherman Arc and Free Series are all outside accessible tools. So all the tools um, are accessible from the outside. Like you don't have to open the multi-tool up. But what they also did was they created a free flowing handle and what I like about this is the fact that in the original kind of Leatherman multi-tools like this this one's not the worst offender for me but there are some that there's just a lot of 
of dust. There's a lot of debris that gathers in here and you can't really clean it out that well. So I do actually like the fact that these are free floating or you know, like these are open. And uh, for that reason that you can clean them out and that dust doesn't just build up in your handles and gunk up the performance or action of your tool. So I will say that is a smart move and I do like that for the most part. Um, when it comes to the newer multi-tools. It also kind of adds a cool effect when you look in, you can see your plier heads as opposed to it being all closed off with the older school multi-tools. Now, do I think this thing is worth it? I think a lot of people, a lot of people are complaining about the price of this multi-tool. And for me, I think 230 bucks is definitely steep. That is of course the most expensive that Leatherman has ever made for a like production level multi-tool. That's not a limited edition per se. I don't know how many arcs will exist in their lifetime, but this is not touted as like a limited edition multi-tool. And so I do think it is a little bit steep. However, I will say there's a lot of R&D that went into this multi-tool and I think that a lot of that cost is just them recouping from the R&D because admittedly the uh, ARC similar to the free series when it initially dropped is a radically like new multi-tool and so there's not a lot of carryover or crossover and I think that's where a lot of people are kind of getting upset with this multi-tool being more expensive is the fact that you know like if you see a Leatherman Bond print instance, the Bond is a reasonably new multi-tool, but it shares a lot of its, um, you know, like functionality and tool set with other multi-tools like the rebar, right? And so when they tool up to make, you know, like each individual tool in here, they can make those tools for, you know, the wave, the um, charge, the Bond, the rebar, you know, like a screwdriver will fit all of those, right? Whereas with this one, like even for instance, let's just say the knife right the knife um, the 420 HC blade is a common thing to see on the wave the surge the you know um, all of those different blades right this is a specific blade for the Leatherman arc so there's a lot of like very specific tools that you're only going to see on the Leatherman arc and so when you see that these blades are or tools I should say are not like transferable they're not you know like something that's interchangeable with other Leathermans in the lineup it means that they're going to be exclusive and expensive so I'm not actually that surprised or terribly disappointed in the price point I was actually personally expecting the arc to be a little bit more expensive but happy that it's not right anyways I will say Things that I do like about the Arc uh, so far, once again, the blade is pretty good. It's a little bit smaller than I'd like it to be, but the blade shape and everything is good. I like that it has a color offset, so every other tool on this knife is, um, you know, of course, just satin, you know, stainless steel, whereas this is, you know, coated black, so you can easily distinguish where the knife is and, you know, which one. Uh, when you're looking for it. In addition to that too, I think the other thing that's not really talked about enough, but that I personally really like, is I like the fact that, that very similar to the Surge, you have this going back to an externally accessible, um, good, like good um, scissor. And once again, when I mean good scissor, I, like it has about the same blade length as the Leatherman Surge's scissors as far as like the cutting length goes, it's nearly identical. The handle itself is a little bit shorter and of course naturally a little bit less um, easy to use, but it has a good like dedicated scissor and I absolutely love to see that. I wish that this would have been like more of an integral part of the charge slash wave series. And the charge and wave do have, they do give you scissors, but they're, you know, inside small tools or, you know, in after sight. Whereas on the arc, you definitely can tell that like this is one of the four core tools. Like you have the you know blade on this side, you have your saw, you have your file, you have like those core tools um, as your externally accessible um, tools. Now, of course, once again, you can technically um, get everything out from the outside of this tool. So if you want your micro screwdriver, you want your all, you know, anything like that, you can do that as well. But I will say I do really appreciate that. Now, as far as it goes, another complaint that I heard and I think is reasonable is the fact that they don't like the opening hole or people don't like the opening hole for the file. And I kind of agree on that. The file probably should not have been 
where it was put. Um, I probably would have put this as more of an internal tool, but it is also long, so it's kind of hard to fit elsewhere. So it's definitely tough. Maybe they should have just done the nail nick because classically, like let's just say um, on the Leatherman Charge, for instance, the Leatherman Charge also has an externally accessible file, but it is a nail nick. So you have to use your nail to pull it up and then put it into action. That way it keeps the, um, you know, actual file itself in one cohesive unit instead of having a large hole in it that jeopardizes its functionality. So there are some things on here definitely that make me kind of scratch my head. The file is one of them where it's like, what were you guys thinking? Once again, it's kind of also like the thumb stud on the blade where it's like, what were, what was Leatherman thinking? Because in my opinion, like we already have really solid opening holes on other Leatherman knives. And I think there is a genuine purpose to that. So anyways, there are some other cooler things on there. Of course, you have the externally accessible fought or saw, I should say. And the saw is nothing too special. It's literally basically just a modernized version of the original saw. It doesn't really, basically has the same cut pattern, has the same kind of angular tip to it. So it's a solid addition. I don't have any issues with it, but you know, just, just another good solid tool. So anyways, kind of wrapping it up, I don't have a whole lot to say about the Leatherman Arc. It's a good tool. I think it's a little bit expensive, but it's also very proprietary. And it's once again, you know, Leatherman's pushing in this new direction with the free series and the Arc and trying to go for a more modern take on their classic tools. So the arc, I think, is a step in the right direction. It's not perfect, but it is a step in the right direction. And I will say, being the only ones to be using a genuinely high quality uh, knife steel or blade steel on their like multi-tools does give them a serious competitive edge because there are weirdos like me that like to carry a you know main blade and then a multi-tool, but a lot of people that carry multi-tools just want to carry the multi-tool. They don't want to be burdened down with an extra, you know, like blade because their blade on their multi-tool is garbage. So I think it's a step in the right direction. And most importantly, I do think that other companies such as SOG and Gerber will copy this design and or at least the materials used. So anyways, guys, hopefully enjoy the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.